Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of PyTest Basics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about PyTest configuration files. So in previous videos, we've configured PyTest from the command line in a couple of ways. So for example, we've used the dash R option so that we can see exfil reasons and skip reasons, and we've used the dash S option so that we can see the output of our prints. Now, it would be really annoying if we had to remember all of the command line options that we needed for the test center project um, every single time we wanted to run a test. Now, fortunately, we can put a lot of this information and a lot of other things about configuring PyTest inside of these special configuration files. And that's what we're going to look at today. So on the right-hand side of the screen here, I have the main documentation for PyTest configuration options. And as you can see, there's a number of different uh, file formats that we can use for our PyTest configuration files. So we can use these PyTest INI files, these PyProject files, or these Tox files. Now, it really doesn't matter which file type you use. Um, we're just going to be using PyTest INI in this example. Use whichever one is your favorite. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and get started. It will open up our PyTest INI file. Now, of course, we're not going to go, go over every configuration option available to you. Um, for that, I'll defer to the main PyTest documentation. Um, but these are a few useful ones to know. So inside of our INI file, at the very top, we have it marked um, as for PyTest. And the first option that we're going to use is this AddOps option. And this is a very common one to use. So this option is used to basically set which command line options should PyTest use by default, right? Which command line flags. So in this case, we're, we're telling PyTest that by default, whenever we invoke PyTest, we want to use dash RA. So we want to see things like skip reasons and exfail reasons when we run tests. We want to use dash S, so we're telling PyTest not to capture the output so we can see things like prints. And then we have a new one here, which is this dash dash strict markers. And this is basically saying that for all the markers used in our test, they have to first be registered uh, with PyTest. And in fact, we do that later on in this file through this markers option. So leading straight into that, the second option that we're setting um, in our PyTest INI file are the markers that we want to register. So we've used a number of PyTest markers in this series. So things like exfail and skip and skip if and parameterize. But we can also add our own markers that we want to have our own special meaning. So if we want to register those markers, we can put that in our PyTest INI file, right? So here we're registering two markers, custom one and custom two. So we can add that to our test with at pytest.mark.custom1 or custom2. And we even have a, uh, a little help message afterwards, right, for documentation. So we put, say, you know, a first example of a custom marker and a second example of a custom marker for our two registered markers. And this is very much like with uh, our PyTest add option hook, where we could, say, add a doc string to our hook, um, or rather to our option, that we could see from the command line. OK. So now that we have our markers as well that we can register, a third thing we have in this file, or a third configuration option, is this Python files option. Now, in the first episode of the series, um, I said that by default, uh, for PyTest to consider a file as potentially having tests in it and to search that file, it has to have test in the name. Now, that's only by default. So we can actually tell fi uh, we can tell PyTest to look in other Python files using this Python files configuration option. So here we're setting two different kinds of file names for PyTest to search through. And that's going to be files starting with test and ending with .py with anything else kind of in the middle here. So that's what this wildcard character is for. And then the second type of file that we're telling PyTest to look in are files that start with example underscore and end with .py. So PyTest won't just search within uh, search for tests and files that start with test. It'll also search for tests and files that start with uh, example underscore now. OK, so those are a couple different ways in which we can configure PyTest. Let's kind of see them in action. So we'll quit out of here, and we'll open up one of our test files, so just this testfile.py. And inside of here, we have three tests. We have a simple xfail test that we've given an xfail reason, a simple skip test where we've given a skip reason, 
and then a simple test that we've marked with our two custom markers. So PyTest mark custom one and custom two. And this test is also going to print something. So we're gonna show off the fact that we have that dash RA automatically set and that dash S automatically set. And we're registering these two markers. Okay. Now the other file that we have with tests in it is this example file.py and why by default PyTest would not normally look in this, inside this file for tests because we've told PyTest to do so inside of our INI file, PyTest will look in this file for tests. So we go ahead and open that up. We just have a single very simple test here, just called test file name. So let's go ahead and quit out of here. And the first thing we can do is say run collection. So we can do PyTest dash dash collect only. And we see that PyTest searches through those two files and finds all four of our tests. So it searches example file.py and gets, gets our test file name. And then from test file.py, it gets our three tests, test x fail, test skip, and test markers. Okay. Now, another thing we can do is we can see what markers we have available to us with pytest dash dash markers. And you can see we have all our normal ones that we know about, like parameterize and xfail and skip if, etc. But then at the very top here, we have our two custom markers that we registered in our INI file. So we have pytest mark custom one and custom two with our little help message afterwards. So this is really useful from a documentation perspective in terms of documenting what these markers are supposed to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our tests. So we'll run all of our tests with just PyTest, and it'll search this whole directory and find all the tests and run them. So we go ahead and run them, and we see that our dash RA and our dash S um, flags all went into effect, the things that we put in that INI file. So we see that example file, our test runs and completes successfully. And then we see from test file.py, our first test X fails, our second test uh, gets skipped, so we have that S there. And then from our third test, we see our print because we had that dash S option automatically set uh, because we specified it in the INI file. And then that test runs and completes successfully. And we also see our, X, our skip reason and our X fail reason for our test because of that dash RA option that we had automatically applied. So in total, we have our two test passed, uh, one skipped, and then one X failed. Okay, great. So going back a little bit, into our uh, dash dash strict markers that we had inside of our INI file here. So like I said earlier, this is to help prevent things like typos. So to make sure that we don't accidentally add a new marker instead of using one that's already registered. So let's go ahead and make a typo in say one of the markers of our tests. So we'll go ahead and open up. So we'll do split uh, test file.py and we'll say, call this, you know, pytest mark custom, right? A marker that we haven't registered. So this should lead to a failure because we're using this dash dash strict markers option. So we'll just use something like pytest dash dash uh, collect only. And we see that pytest actually fails, right? And it tells us that custom not found in markers configuration option because we're using that strict markers option by default. Okay, so we can go ahead and revert that. And then one final thing we can do, of course, is we can select which tests to run based on, say, our custom markers. So we can do pytest m, and then we can select, you know, which tests we want to run based on a marker name. So we can say pytest m, say custom one, and then you can see that it collects all four of our tests, but it deselects the ones that don't have the custom one marker. So it just runs our single test that is marked with that custom marker and we see we get that print. Okay, so that's some basics on how to use these configuration files. Like I said, I'll go ahead and link this documentation on the configuration options below the video. As you can see, there are quite a lot of configuration options that you can choose from. As always, if you wanna take a, a you know more of a look at this example, you can find this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So you can find it under repositories and then under PyTest. So, Feel free to take a look at any of these files, play around with them, let me know if you have any questions. But as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.